This week on TGC News, Beretta shrinks the APX, a new narrow pistol, wink, and a battle between Prime and Ruag ammo. Keltec offers some of the most interesting and innovative firearms in recent memory. Whether you're into bullpup rifles like the RDB or RFB, or maybe the KSG bullpup shotgun in short or gigantic configuration, or maybe you just want to plink around with some pistol caliber stuff like the Sub 2000 or PF9. They make something affordable for everyone. To learn more, check out KeltecWeapons.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Shout out to everyone that's watching this right now on an actual television. You're watching the TGC panel, brought to you by Brownells. Let's kick this week's show off with some new handguns. How about them apples? First, Beretta has released a new version of their APX called the APX Carry. Basically, this is a subcompact, single stack version of the APX. It has a removable serialized chassis that houses the fire control group and that can be swapped around just like the full size gun. Let's run down the features on the carry. It is a nine millimeter striker fired semi-auto with a three inch barrel. It also has a mag catch that can be swapped from left to right side. The grip module can be swapped out for one with heavy aftermarket stippling or a different color. The sights are easily removed with just a set screw and the gun comes with two mags and three base plates. The base magazine itself holds six rounds and they have three different base plates in the box. One that is a plus two extension, one that has a pinky extension, and then of course a flat base. It comes in at under an inch wide and is basically the same size as the rest of the guns in this class. They all kind of reside in that 0.9 inch space. The way I look at this is sort of twofold. First, it's an expansion of the APX line, which is cool. It has some of the same styling on the slide and a similar shape to the grip. Beyond that though, this is a replacement for the Nano, whether or not Beretta actually says so. The Nano was a solid gun for its time. I did a review on it back in 2012. It had some quirks, but I liked it. This is a nine millimeter and I'm not afraid to use it. Man. This takes that same slim style of gun and brings it up to speed with the kind of features that are expected on guns in this market segment. The pricing on this comes in at $450 MSRP and on launch it'll be available in four different colors. What do you guys think about this? Does it have the power to take down the almighty M&P shield or is it going to fall short? Obviously it doesn't hold a candle to the capacity of something like the P365, but is it good even without 11 rounds in the mag? Sound off below and let me know what you're thinking. Ruger, not wanting to be left out of the news for a single week, has released a gun that has some folks kind of scratching their heads and others going, heck yeah, it's called the Wrangler. It's a six shot single action revolver chambered in 22 long rifle. They'll come in three different colors of Cerakote, black, bronze, and silver. At first I kind of thought, who is this for? I didn't think there was a lot of demand for it. Then I thought to myself, well, what about taking a new shooter to the range? A single action's a good option for that. Or if I ever wanted to practice my own single action shooting without having to spend money on larger rounds and maybe more expensive guns to do it. It's got the same overall dimensions as the single six from Ruger, so basically it's a training version of that gun. And then I saw the price. The MSRP is 250 bucks, which puts it in a class of guns that are affordable enough not to care about the intended purpose and just to have fun. Unless you live in Massachusetts or Minnesota where it's banned for some reason. But strangely, if you live in California, New York, or New Jersey, it's totally legal. So hey, y'all go get your cowboy out. And in more handgun news this week, a new challenger appears. This is called the N1 from Narrow Arms. 
Long story short, it's a hammer fired single stack nine millimeter. It's actually very similar in size to the APX we just covered a little bit ago. It has a 3.125 inch barrel, three dot polymer sights that are the same pattern as a Glock 43, comes with seven round mags, one with a flush base and one with a pinky extension. And unlike some other options in this arena, it actually has a Picatinny rail under the nose. Being that this is a new pistol and brand that a lot of folks are probably unfamiliar with, I'll cover some of the more simplistic stuff as well. It has a flip down lever for takedown, similar to other options on the market. It has a square textured mag release button, which does not appear to be ambidextrous. It has some mild texturing on the grip and an M&P lookalike slide catch. The slide itself does have some nice serrations on the front and rear, as well as some kind of Jenny Craig cuts on the top. Overall, it looks pretty cool if you ask me. I'm, I'm excited about this one. I actually want to put it in my hands at NRAM. But here's where things get interesting. Remember that this is a hammer-fired gun. Double action only, in fact. And on top of that, it has an aluminum frame that is serialized. So much like the APX we talked about earlier, that's striker fired, this has the option of swapping out grip modules. That whole serialized portion comes out of the gun. Although in the N1 press release, they do say that it requires a gunsmith to do so. A slight trade-off for a newer company without like millions to dump into R&D to make that super easy. So to recap here, the N1 is a hammer-fired 9 mil with a removable chassis, and I don't think I've seen that before. I've only seen it in striker fired. The MSRP on the Narrow N1 comes in at 410 bucks. That puts it right in line with some serious competition. We shall see how that one fares. We also have a bit of long gun news for you guys this week. Brownells has a new version of the BRN 180 that we talked about at SHOT Show this year. Simply put, it's a shorty upper version, 10.5 inch barrel. Everything else is basically the same, just shorter. To be quite honest with you, I might prefer the short version over the long one. Sorry, I told myself I wouldn't make potty jokes this week. I said, I'm not doing it. I can't do it. The pricing on the BRN 180S is 800 bucks. In more long gun news, Savage has continued to expand on their MSR line of rifles with the new MSR 15 long range. It's chambered in, you guessed it, 224 Valkyrie, has a 22 inch barrel with a custom length gas system, what they are calling custom forged receivers, a tunable brake, non reciprocating side charging handle, two stage trigger, and a Magpul PRS stock out back. It's kind of interesting seeing new stuff from Savage chambered in Valkyrie. Maybe it's the Rebirth now and a version that will actually group consistently. I'm going to reach out to them and see if I can get one of these on hand to test out and see if we can make it work. The MSRP on this thing is a not cheap but not unbelievable considering the features, $1,735. Is he fire up the struggle bus? We have some new passengers. This time it's Adams Arms. They are a Florida based gun company focusing primarily on piston driven ARs. And it seems that they are in debt to the tune of $5.1 million. The company is now up for auction with intent for someone to buy them as a functional or semi functional. If you have to be up for auction, it's kind of semi-functional business. You got to really want to get a hold of their patents to be willing to instantly go $5 million in debt. But what do I know? I'm curious to see how that shakes out for all the folks working at Adam's Arms. Also on the struggle bus this week, Prime Ammo and their supplier, Ruag Ammo Tech. You are tied for the lead. I'm going to try to condense this down as much as possible because it's pretty convoluted at this point. You're probably familiar with Prime Ammo. We've used some in the past. It's good stuff. Well, all of their ammo was loaded and supplied by a company called Ruag Ammo Tech. We will just call them Ruag from now on to keep it short. Their relationship with Prime seemed to be going well, with Prime introducing a new 6mm cartridge back in late spring of 2018. But here's a catch. That never made it to market. And right now, there's nothing that you can buy from Prime. The relationship went totally sideways. Hey Siri, call my girlfriend. Which one? 
You may have seen a video in the last few days of Prime CEO Jim O'Shaughnessy recently on social media outlining their side of the story. In the video, Jim says that Prime has 100% prepaid for all of the ammo and that Ruag is essentially trying to bully them out of business to the point where right now they have no money until this is settled and the product and money tied up in all of this become sort of movable again. He also accused Ruag of trying to reboot the Norma brand and use ammo designed by Prime to destroy Prime. There are a lot of folks standing behind Jim and that company right now. It's a compelling story for sure, but it's not the entire story. Ruag put out a press release about this, saying that Prime is delinquent on payment for 1.2 million rounds of ammo, and that Prime was in the habit of receiving and selling ammo from Ruag without ever paying for it. So Prime says that they paid, and Ruag says that they didn't. Great. In the middle of all that is a bunch of emotions and money. Cases like this are tough for me to cover. I have friends on both sides of this particular case. I really like Prime Ammo and they've always treated me well. I also like the people that I've met from Ruag. But I am not going to get in the middle of this despite how many phone calls and emails I've received to get me to go to bat for one side or the other. It's a lot. The long and short of this is that contracts matter and the courts are going to have to decide who is right and who is wrong. Who do you guys side with on this issue? Do you think that Prime is actually being bullied or are they actually non-payers? Sound off in the comments and weigh in with your thoughts. Birchwood KC's selection of shooting products is astounding. Whether you're looking for the best targets to zero your gun, or maybe you want to refurbish a forgotten classic, or maybe you just want to slam some steel and have a good time at the range. And don't forget that ear and eye protection. No matter what kind of shooter you are, Birchwood Casey has what you need. And because you watch TGC, they're going to help you out with a discount of 10% off your entire order when you use the code TGC10 over at birchwoodcasey.com. Time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the interwebs. A rave is an all-night dance party with up to a thousand participants. This week, our questions are coming from YouTube. First up, Bryce Canfield says, Do you believe in the efficacy of multi-caliber systems like the Warlock from Frontier Tactical? Honestly, no. AR-15 uppers are so easy to swap, it's two pins for God's sake, that I don't personally get the appeal of those systems that allow you to take the barrel off quickly, on an AR at least. I understand that it has some potential benefits, but I just don't see myself getting behind that in a big way. Mark Dahlia says, what do you think of carbines and pistols that use the same mags known as perfect pairs? I think they're neat. That's it. Ben 501st says, what cartridge do you wish would make a comeback and why? I'm going to have to say the 41 Action Express. It was only available to my knowledge in the Jericho back in the day. It was kind of a neat round. I would have probably said the 440 Corbon before, but that's sort of been rebooted and is now the 429 DE. Jose Trucker says, when are they going to make an AR that shoots 50 AE? Well, they already sort of do make that. The 50 Beowulf was based on the 50 Action Express, and the reason it's a longer round as a whole is because they could never make that short and stubby 50 AE work in an AR reliably. Maybe someone will be able to make it work on a pistol caliber carbine platform now that those are super popular and really the technology is at a point where that might be a possibility. And rounding us out, Pete Strebent says, why are people in gun-related stores so rude? Let's be fair. That's not just limited to gun stores. People in general are pretty rude these days, but gun stores oftentimes have a culture of a uh, I know best and everyone else is a moron and it's toxic as hell. The focus on customer service seems to be dying off and is being replaced with fake bravado and chest pounding nonsense from people behind the counter with little man syndrome mixed with a healthy dose of miserable bastarditis and maybe a sprinkling of why is my life so terrible? Gun store clerks should be positive and helpful. They're the front line of the gun industry, but sometimes they just don't act like that. Sure, not all gun store guys are jerks. That's 
obvious. Of course they're not. I know a lot of them that are great people, but the douchebags are certainly noticeable. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What is the gun that you own right now that means the most to you? This will be good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you disliked it, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, hit the bell, consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have Amazon affiliate links, links for purchasing shirts and patches and this and that, social media. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, here we go. I got it, all right. Uh, don't sneeze, don't sneeze, no sneeze. Hit that button if you disliked it, hit this. Let me redo that. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.